Steph, Steph Allen, thank you for jumping on the podcast today. Um, sorry about last week. We had uh, to rearrange it, but it was for right. uh, the best. Yeah, no, everything happens for a reason. So I'm glad we're here. Appreciate you having me. So let's talk about the bro- brotherhood. Yeah. And creating a brotherhood for men because I've said on the podcast, and I believe it's true that, you know, masculinity is forged against men. Mm-hmm. It's not something that you're just born with. It's not something that you do on your own. You need other men to conquer anything and to overcome. We need men to keep us in check for how we're treating our wives, uh, carrying ourselves, etc. So with uh, your brotherhood program, let's go into, I guess, your thoughts on, on that very topic. This episode is sponsored by Black Label Meat. Black Label Meat only sells premium quality meat that is grass-fed, grassed, finish, and they do regenerative grazing practices. Check them out now, blacklabelmeatcompany.com, and use the code JESSE for 10% off. If we want to be, if we want to be the men that deep, here's what I, so I think every man has this version of himself in his head that he wants to be. Think it, it, his health is improved. His mindset's improved. He's not making excuses. He has a schedule. He has a routine. He's trustworthy. He's reliable. Um, he stands up for what he believes in. He's there for his kids. He's there, like you said, for his spouse. I think all of, I think every man has this version of himself that he wants to be yet. Um, majority of men, the vast majority of men don't live up to that potential. And I think the way that our society is ran nowadays, it's not really encouraging for men to do that. Right. Um, and so it, now we are at a very pivotal point. I, I believe in our society where we need men to step up because this concept that I talk about inside the brotherhood group, it's called break the chains and the goal of it is to realize that if we as men now, us in our 30s and 40s, um, 50s who are dads and, and things like that, whether we're dads or, or not, but if we don't break the chains of the things that we struggle with and if we don't stand up for the life that we want, that means our kids won't. And so if we don't break these chains, then that's putting the responsibility on them to figure it out. And the reason I came up with that and I feel like God laid that on my heart is a lot of the growth that I've experienced through my twenties and now I'm 33 was stuff that I learned on my own. Like I didn't, my dad is currently not in my life, which is unfortunate. Um, but it, I didn't grow up that way. There's just kind of a slow separation, but I didn't learn these concepts. I didn't learn about money. I didn't learn about finance in any kind of way. I didn't learn about business. Um, didn't learn about health and fitness and things like that. It was just all learned through people that I followed and watched on social media, Instagram, YouTube, and which I'm thankful for because now these principles and these just this lifestyle that I've worked on creating, I know I can pass it. And I'm already seeing my kids now live this way. Like my, my oldest son, he'll turn 10 in December and he is every day. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating every single day. He does a hundred pushups and a hundred sit-ups. And it's not anything nice. crazy, but it's just he sees the lifestyle that I live and he tells me all the time, like, Dad, I want to be like you. And I always tell him, I'm going to make it hard, but I want you to be better than me. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's just the standard. And so I feel like the reason he lives that way and has that expectation and standard in his head is because of what he's seeing. And so I yeah. feel like we have a lot of men who want to be living that way. I literally had a guy tell me today, not like right before this call. Um, he said, I want my daughter to look at me and say, that's my dad. Like just that proud moment and feeling that a kid looks up to their dad. But I know a lot of men, they don't live that way. A lot of men have kids who look up to other people and there's nothing wrong with having role models, but it's just like, dude, I want my kids to look up to me. Yeah. I don't want them to look up to, I'm not saying don't look up to anybody else, but it's like the first person they say they want to be like or look up to is me. And then if it's the LeBron James or the Kobe Bryant's or Tiger Woods of the world, then that's awesome. But I have a responsibility as a man and as a dad to be that example because they see me every day. They interact with me every single day. So 
the brotherhood group is helping men become that version of themselves in their head that they know they can be. And we do that through community. And then we do that through what we call the, uh, the P4 method. And so I have four protocols that these guys run through every single day. And the reason why we have a protocol is because just like you and I know, and you, we just talked about this before we, we hit record, life's not perfect. Things get thrown in our schedule all the time. We fall off routine. We fall out of habit, but we have nothing to fall. Most men don't have anything to fall back to. They were just going so consistently and so good for so long. And then once they get knocked, knocked off, they're like, oh, what do I do now? So mm -hmm. we instill in these men, hey, just go back to your protocol. It's very simple, right? Being fit and being healthy is not hard. The hard part is the execution, but the concept is very easy. Eat good food, move your body consistently, lift weights, drink water, reduce alcohol, sleep a lot. Like that's, it's very, very simple. But we've, because of social media and because of influencers and programs, it seems so overwhelming for people that it's just like, man, let's just strip away all the fluff and let's look directly at what gets you results. And it's those, it's that process. <laughs> Can you share what those four pillars are? Yeah, absolutely. So our first pillar is our um, our faith. That's the first thing we 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 encourage the guys to to dive deeper into, right? Um, and the reason that is is because a lot of guys who come to me they they tell me they don't have they don't feel like they have a purpose. Well, it's just like God didn't put you here to just do nothing. You do have a purpose, but you'll never find that looking within yourself. You have to find that through knowing who God is. Like if you don't know God, if you don't trust God, then it's really hard to wake up every single day and just say, well, I'm just going to work as hard as I can and be the best that I can. But it's like, well, where are you going? What are you working towards? Who are you trying to become? And the for me, the moment that I surrendered everything to God and stop trying to do it my way was the moment that I had the most clarity, the moment that I had the most understanding. And since then, which was very recent actually, actually, but since then, um, I've been reading my Bible daily. Not, I mean, I have like a, I might miss a day or two, but it's very consistent, right? Um, I feel closer to God. And because of that, I'm able to just have that confidence of in clarity. Like I told you before the call, like I know I'm supposed, I know where I'm at is exactly where I'm supposed to be at because mm -hmm. I do believe it's in line with who God wants me to be. So protocol number one is our faith doing that first thing in the morning, which kind of bleeds into protocol number three, but protocol number one is our faith. Protocol number two is our health and fitness. So that is encompassing food and um, exercising. So, we have it set up. They have a program to follow inside of the brotherhood group. Um, they have midday activities to do too, because I believe movement is medicine, right? And a lot of us are just stagnant. We don't do any kind of movement throughout the day. Um, the, the workout program is strength based. It's a, it's a progressive overload, overload system. So we're just, we have them in the gym and just, we have them in the gym three days a week. And some guys are like, oh, I got to go to the gym Monday through Friday. I'm like, no, you don't go three days and lift weights. Do that yeah. consistently. Be in there for 45 yeah. minutes and you and you'll be good. So I only lift that. three days. Yeah. Um, and so with that, on the on the nutritional side, we keep it very simple to reduce processed foods. We go through more and extensively, but the idea is we reduce processed foods eat whole foods, prioritize whole foods, um, prioritize whole foods and reduce alcohol. If I can get these guys to stop drinking alcohol and that comes through conversation, I'm not saying every guy has to stop. It just really depends on where they're at with alcohol, why they drink it. And, and again, we go into more details, but the goal for them is to understand what alcohol does to their body. It does. It has literally zero benefits. Yeah. So if we can no, get them to reduce it, then great. If they eventually stop drinking it, great too. Either one. Um, protocol number three is our morning routine. So I have a list of things for them to do to check off in the morning. And all of these are based around taking care of themselves first. Because most men, what we do is we wake up and we grab our phone and we're already in stress. 
whether it's emails, whether it's social media, whatever it is, text messages, they don't do anything for themselves. And so because of that, they, they lose all this precious time in the morning and I'll go to the next protocol, but we, they lose all this precious time in the morning where they could be taking care of themselves, setting up their day for success, but instead they're stressed, they're overwhelmed. And because of that, they don't do anything for themselves. They just go into putting out fires or ignoring as much as they can and just mindlessly scroll because that helps them feel better. And in reality, they're not getting anything accomplished. Um, so we have a morning protocol routine for them to follow. And then the last protocol is our evening routine to follow. And the whole idea behind that is like, hey, give yourself time, give your body time, give your um, give your nervous system time to decompress, to not be in this fight or flight mode right before you go to bed. And so many guys are like, oh, I didn't sleep good last night. And then but they don't realize why they don't sleep good. And it's like, well, you were watching TV up until right before you went to bed or maybe you drank right before you went to bed or maybe you got in an argument with someone right before you went to bed. Like there's no time scheduled for a lot of men of just decompressing of mm -hmm. just being breathing we have some breathing technique stuff in there so um but yeah i just i genuinely believe through these four protocol processes every man will get healthier they'll reduce stress and inflammation they'll be more mindful they'll have a better schedule and then even they'll have a better relationship with god and then through that they become the man that they know they can be but it takes work. It does take work. But once you get through the work, it's so easy because you've created habits and rituals. Yep. And li life is, is so nice when you've compounded into a direction of positivity. Yes. It's, it's good. I've always had morning routines and nighttime routines. And... I don't like my routines to be interrupted yeah. and I can be flexible if they, if they are, but it, the routines have allowed me to, to do all the things that I've done. They've allowed me to get the, all the fucking good sleep. It allows me to wake up between that three thirty and four yep. and just, and feel great. I think morning and nighttime routine is, is so important, especially for someone who wants to change where their life is. Yeah. Change. They're not going to do it without those, without the routines. Yeah. Yeah. No. And you, something you said, it's, you said um, something along the lines of like your routines have helped you become this version of yourself. Yeah. And it's yeah. just like, if, if men just hear that and just realize it's not a magic pill, it's not a, one day we just woke up and we're like, I'm just going to stop doing all the things that don't serve me and start. No, it's like it's a process, mm -hmm. but it has to be a process that pushes you to become that version of yourself. It has to be a process that serves you. And, dude, I feel like a lot of us, we do men and women, we do things throughout our day that we don't even really want to be doing or that are just such a waste of time. But because we are creatures of habit because of the neurological pathways that we've created that that are the reasons why we have the same patterns and routines that we have, we just inevitably do them. But it takes time. It takes intentional work and focus to change those patterns. But until you commit to making those changes and putting yourself in a situation to change, you're just always we're just always going to be people who struggle and who live beneath our potential and that right there for people who are listening and who are just like man i'm not who i want to be it's like well you're operating at less than your potential mm -hmm. like i would just encourage people like just stop and just take a look at your life right now are you operating at the the to the best of your ability are you the person you want to be and if the answer is no it's like well why not who's that's nobody else's fault but yours but we want to blame situations, circumstances, mm -hmm. parents, where I grew up. It's like there are very, there are a lot of successful people who have made it and they had worse situations than you. Very true. So right. True. And anyone who thinks that they can't create a new um, morning habits 
nighttime rituals, it's like you, they probably don't realize they already have morning and nighttime. They already do. Yes. They're yep. just shit. Yep. They don't serve them. 100%. Exactly. It's the 100%. only difference between my morning and nighttime, your morning and nighttime, and theirs. Like theirs just don't benefit them. And I think even along that thought, as you're saying that, I'm like, theirs was something that was created out of comfort. Mm-hmm. And yours or mine or the guys that I work with, that is created out of intentional discomfort. We've intentionally put ourselves in a situation to be uncomfortable, but that discomfort has allowed us to live the lifestyle that we want to live. It's like, it's not comfortable to wake up at 4 a.m. It's not comfortable to turn the TV off and, and be mindful before you go to bed. Like, it's not like there's more comfortable and more ideal things for us to do. But again, it just goes back to like, well, who do you want to be? Do you want to be this different person? that version of yourself that you have imagined or thought about, or do you just want to be the person that you are? Yeah. And once you've created those new habits, gone through the discomfort, essentially torn that muscle to create new muscle. um, It's easy. Yeah. Because it's when I've had people like, Oh, I couldn't do your morning. I couldn't do your day. It's like, well, it's easy. You totally could. Yeah. You just don't like the thought of it right now because it's not a habit for you. Yeah. You don't know how to manage your time exactly. or, you know, I've been on group calls where someone's like, there's no, it's impossible to work out two times a day, man, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, <laughs> and I'm like, in one way you could, I could say that I do it three times because at 4 a.m. I'm doing three miles with my dog. Now yep. that's his three miles. And that's three miles of my time with God right. because it's, it's in the dark. Yep. We go out in the Hills and I just have a conversation with God. And yep. My dog is running all amok. Yep. And then I, and then I come home, I do other things. I go to the gym. I'm back by eight o'clock. Right. Like my kids aren't even up. Yeah. You know, I've showered and eaten breakfast all before that as well. Yeah. that time and then a little bit later around like 2 p.m i'll do like an actual run mm-hmm. because i schedule it in there i like fit that stuff in there yeah um so it's like in one hand you could say it's like well i've gotten three done and you're just in two of those you're just rolling out of bed you're just getting and you up, haven't yeah. got enough things to do that third one yeah you know i don't call the first one a workout but i'm out there walking it's three movement. miles yeah yeah, yeah. And then getting ready for hunting season, I ruck it. So I'll have 55 to 85 pounds on my back and I just will do it every day. But even, even talking about that too, cause I got, I got guys who I know who hunt, um, guys who are fit, healthy and shape and guys who are the exact opposite. But it's just like to the people who, who do that, I'm like, pretty sure you wake up early to, to go out. Don't you? That's not something you do at you know, two in the afternoon, like you're up early to get out to the stand or whatever it is. But it comes down to that is a priority for you because Mm -hmm. it's either something you've done for so long or honestly, it's just easy. Like it's, and it's something you enjoy. So, but telling somebody who's never been hunting before to, Hey, we're going to wake up at two 30 or 3 AM. So we can head out. They would be like, what the heck? Why would we do that? Cause it's not normal to them. It's not routine. It's not something they're used to. So it's like to people who really what I'm getting at is just, if we can make, there's so many things we can, that people do that are habitual that really don't serve them in any kind of way, but they just don't realize that they've just done it out of routine. So it's like, imagine if you just figured out a way to have a routine when it came to your health or when it came to your mindset or when it came to your faith, Like at some point, like you said, you waking up to read your Bible, while it might have been hard in the beginning to start that in a couple months or in a couple years, it's just that's just what you do. But it's just working through that uncomfortable season of it. So what 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 do you tell people is the first step to to change any of those habits, like just step one? If someone's like, I can't do it, it just seems difficult or 
I always hear the the thing about the diet is that it's expensive, but we'll we'll touch on that one next. Yeah, please, that'd be great. Um, honestly, the very first thing, not trying to be um, cliche, but if you keep saying I can't do it, you won't. Mm-hmm. So we can just start there. We can just start with your words. We can just start with your thoughts. Like, what do you think about yourself? Do you think you're able to? Most people, oh, I don't know, man. Well. That doubt, as soon as you hit a level of adversity, you're just going to give in because you've already put yourself at a deficit, right? I love this example. What if you were boarding a plane and you got to talk to the pilot and you asked the pilot, hey, do you think you'll, you'll be able to get us from L.A. to New York? And he goes, well, I think I can. You would be like, what do you mean you think you can? Mm-hmm. That's not certain. So if there's doubt in his mind, there's probably going to be doubt in other people's mind. Now, if you ask that same pilot or a different pilot, the same question, he's like, yeah, I can get you there. No problem. It's like, well, he's not going to let anything get in his way of getting that plane from point A to point B. But the concept behind that is like, it's all a mindset. It's all your words. Your words are very, very powerful. And people don't realize that. So people who are like, oh, I can't. I'm like, that's another that you just put up another brick between yourself and the person you want to become. Every day you say, I can't, another brick. I don't know, that's hard, another brick. And over, and people have been doing this for years. Imagine how big that wall is Mm -hmm. that they've just built because of their words, not because of any action they've Mm -hmm. tried or taken, literally because of their words. So step one, you have to literally believe it. You have to down within your soul, that person you want to believe in your or be in your head, you have to believe it's possible. That doesn't mean you have to believe it's easy. That doesn't mean, oh, yeah, tomorrow I can become that person. No, you just have to be fully convinced that I can do this. And sometimes you just have to re- tell yourself that over and over and over again. Yeah, and go talk to someone who's 60, 65 who's had the I can't mentality their whole life and someone you don't know. So you don't have that emotional attachment to them. Well, like, Oh, I love them. They're awesome. Yeah. It's like, no, get a, a, a clip of a, someone who's 65, who's had an, I can't mentality their whole life. And you will want to run screaming. Yeah. And, and the, it's funny how those people who say I can't, when you ask them why it has nothing to do with them, but everything to do with everybody else or a outside situation or circumstances. Circumstances. Or yeah. The whole thing. They, so they don't take account. They don't take any personal accountability. It's like, can't because my dad or my mom or my school or whatever it was. No, it's because of you. It's because you keep saying I can't. Yeah. I've had, I've had someone, uh, 30 years older than me say, I've read every self-help book, gone to all the seminars and I haven't changed. Why (laughs) is it? And they're talking, this person can freaking whip out reading a self-help book. Like is a reader. Right. And it's like, they're like, why? And it's like, it's like, I know the answer, but Mm -hmm. you're not going to like the answer. Well, because a lot of people, the process of thinking about doing is better than actually doing. Yeah. And I, I, I told this person, it's like, you are the kind of person who thinks this works for everybody else. Right. But it doesn't work for you. The reality is you're the problem, not those yeah. books. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's you don't believe that you are capable of doing it. Yep. Yeah. And 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 nobody likes that. Yeah, there are. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, But I do think and I've had people who reach out to me who ask questions or send messages. And um, and sometimes it's like the same question over and over and over again, but just asked in a different way. And it's just they feel it makes them feel good to be in this like discovery mode. Oh, I'm trying to figure this out. Let me ask questions. Let me get answers. Let me watch a YouTube video. Let me listen to a podcast because I'm, I'm going to figure this out. But it's just like you'll never figure it out if you don't just go. Mm-hmm. 
that's the real, that's where you get the real answers is when you just go, you sitting there and thinking about building a plane versus actually building a plane. You're not going to learn anything, but thinking about it, you're going to learn a hell of a lot when you actually do it though. Yeah. Yeah. You'll learn, you'll learn along the way. It's like developing that, those habits. Yeah. Like my, my morning routine has changed over the years because I'm trying to figure out how to make it more efficient. Right. It's like, so I used to wake up and go to the gym fasted Mm -hmm. and, but now it's like, I'll wake up, eat right away. Then me and my dog go do three miles. And then it's like shower, read, hit the gym. Yeah. It's like, I, I, you, you will tweak it to yeah. be more efficient, especially when you have good habits, you're working out, you're going to want to figure out how you can do it even better. Yeah. is one of the things. Yep. And you're yeah, going to be you, like, yeah, you want to be more efficient, like you said. And I think just the principle of what, like, even what you're saying, I'm like, so you, you have recognized and realized, okay, this concept of taking care of myself in the morning makes me feel good. But as I get older, as kids get older, as life changes, that's going to have to that's going to have to shift. That doesn't mean I stop doing it. I just shift with what life looks like right now and keep Mm -hmm. the principle the same. I want to take care of myself first. Might look different than it did three, four, five, six years ago, but the concept hasn't changed. It's just how you go about it has changed and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. There was a time in my life where I went from 4 a.m. to the 3.30 and I was like 3.30 every day. And it's like, The amount that I could do, and this was before I had a, I had a job, a corporate job that I'd be at, at like seven. Yeah. And it was like this 30 minutes, like losing 30 minutes of sleep throughout the week, it, that adds up. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> it, what else it will give me back is going to be worth it. And just the 30 minute difference. I got used to it really quick. Mm -hmm. I actually ended up feeling like my body did really well on that number of that hours of sleep. Yeah. And I was like, Oh man, I actually feel pretty good. Even, even though like scientifically you don't want to like get less sleep than, than more sleep. But regardless, I still felt really good still doing great in the gym, but just adjusting it 30 minutes and being aware and not going, well, then I can't do something else. Right. Yeah. And it's that's like, where most no. people go. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, no, no. If I adjust this, let's see how it works out. I ended up feeling good. And I did that for a long time. And then even after I left that, that job, um, I still was waking up at 3.30 for forever. Yep. It's forever. ingrained. And it was just like, yeah, you're, my body was just used to it. I was able to change my morning routine a little bit to do more things. Cause I didn't have to be anywhere at seven. Right. And it was, uh, it's awesome, but it's the fact it's a, it's a full circle because mm-hmm. I still had a nighttime routine. I have my phone, my phone just goes into bedtime mode. I yep. have an alarm, get ready for bed. People can't call me. No notifications. I already do no notifications on my phone to begin with. Yeah. But I know it's, the bedtime setting. I mean, these fucking phones these days, you can make it do whatever you want. Easy. Yeah. It's no, so easy. There's yep. literally like bedtime and sleeping apps on these phones. Yeah. And it's know. like and nobody can struggle. Yeah. I yeah. Know. It's like you can make it to where no one can disturb you between this time. Only certain people can call you during this right. time. Yeah. It's like yeah. I, if something terrible were to happen, I still have some family members who can still, it can, that <laughs> call will come through. Just like how did we, we were, I think me and Mags were talking about this the other day. We we're like, what did people do when we didn't have cell phones and you couldn't, the only way you could contact me was if you called my house. And if I was gone, I would call you back when I got back and I would check the, check the voicemail. And now it's just like, if we don't text back in five minutes, we freak out. Oh, it's yeah. And I'm, so I'm a hand, like five years older than you, four years older than you, but I try to leave my phone all the time because I just love that old school stuff of like, no one needs to hold me. It's like, yeah. I know where my, my wife is and my kids are. I'm going to leave my phone and my okay. wife uh-huh. does not like it. <laughs> yeah, she does not like it. She'll like 
I'll be getting it ready to leave with the boys or something. And she'll be like, I noticed that your phone's on your desk. Did, did you mean to do that? And it was like, oh, oops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah I'll, I'll go and I'll go in and grab that. Yeah, it's it's even nice too to just let it be and not yeah not let it because it is a distraction too. So, but like you to your point too, it's also a tool that a lot of people could use to benefit. Mm -hmm. Like we were talking about the lifestyle that they want to have. Shut it down at when eight when eight eight p.m. comes. Have it shut everything down. Only certain people can contact you. So yeah, it's put a, put a that, limit. You know, some people like put a limit on social media apps, like a time limit. I have that as well. Certain certain time throughout the day, then you're done. So there's people. There's ways to do it. People just have to get out of their own way. Stop making excuses and decide: do they really want to do it, or is it just cool for them to talk about doing it? No, they they'll they'll just talk about it. They're not gonna. Yep. They're not gonna do it. Like I have a I have a buddy who sold his company for eight figures at 36 years old. Jeez. And he, awesome. if we went out when we were young and dumb kids, when we'd go out on the weekends, go to the lake, etc., that fucker was still up at 5 a.m. every day. Yep. Even on the weekends. Yep. Just out of like the habits yep. he had. And he yep. would tell you, he's like, in his words, I don't feel too sexy the next day because he was still getting up at five and mm -hmm. we had gone out lack of sleep, but it was just something he did no matter. He's on a what. mission. Yeah. On a yeah. freaking mission. And that's that confidence right there is what I hope I can help instill in the men. Cause it's just like when you, when we set our minds to something, we can, we'll accomplish it. Like we're, we're men are stubborn. Like, if we really want to do something, we can do it no matter how long it takes because we don't want to be wrong, right? We don't want to lose like to our core. That's who we are as men. But we've gotten to this point in our society where we're so worried about failing and what people are going to say or people making fun of us or like I told you, you couldn't do it or whatever. And it's just like that has overcome inherently what we were built to do and that was to conquer yeah. but just think about the concept of conquer you think about a war and it's like well wars are not easy right so same thing for your life like it is a war it is a battle your the goal is to conquer the goal but you let other people's opinions and thoughts and words get ahead of and make it a bigger deal when it comes to this process that you just don't do anything. Cause you're like, well, most people, and whether they want to admit it or not, they're like, well, I didn't go for it. So no harm, no foul, but it's like, that's worse. That's I would worse. rather you go for it and fail 10, 20, 30 times because along that path, you're going to figure something out, something, and you're going to be a better man to some extent. But if you keep going, Oh man, I, I really want to start that business, but I know my friends are going to make fun of me for posting on social media about it. So I don't want to deal with that. So I'd just rather not. And I'm just like, there's no way to live. No way to live. Dude, pe what I've learned over life is people are going to say stuff about you and talk about you regardless of what you do. So you might as well do the thing you want to do. Completely agree. And uh, for us as men, it always is kind of mind boggling that we do care about the opinion of other people. Yeah. You know, like if you go back even to the time of Jesus, it's like his disciples, they literally were tortured mm -hmm. because they were like, no, this is what happened. This is who we are. Yep. Versus they were like, no, man, it's, it's all good. I just talked to him that one time at the corner, you know, right. we were at the well getting water and I was just like, yeah. hey, Mm -hmm. I don't know that guy. Yeah. No, these guys, these guys literally believed so much in what it is that they were doing. Yeah. So this uh, taking away from the biblical thing, they took it. They believed so much. They were willing to be fucking tortured. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. we don't believe in ourselves enough to even post on social media, to even like take that first step to yeah. ask people to support us and what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's so many dynamics to that. 
fear of judgment, fear of failure, fear of, fear of people thinking you're in it for the wrong reasons, whatever it might be. But at the end of the day, if you know in your heart you're doing, you're chasing a passion or a dream, you got to go for it. I mean, because the worst thing is regret. The worst thing is for you to look back and just be like, oh, man, I hate my job. I wish I would have tried this. And what people don't realize is like every day that goes by, that's just a day you lose. Mm -hmm. And we get so comfortable with being comfortable that like, as you know, one year, two years, those that year goes by fast now, like being in my 30s, like mm -hmm. time it's it's the weekend before like tomorrow's gonna feel like the weekend and i'm just like we just got to monday but time goes by so fast and these people most men people in general but our focus is men i'm like we just delay because we don't want to encounter judgment or critique or whatever it is and before we know it that that delay of i'll start on monday or i'll start next week or maybe next year we're five years down the road and we haven't done anything we haven't even gotten off off the starting line mm -hmm. and and then it's just like what and then it goes back to like your kids like what are you showing your kids through that you're you're showing them not to take a chance on themselves you're showing them that let fear stand in the way of who you want to become I'm like for me and like the guys i work with that is not an option that's not acceptable let mm -hmm. your kids see you fail and, and more importantly let them see how you respond Yes. That is the only thing that's going to give give them confidence. If they're like, man, dad went for it, it, he failed, but he's still going. Like that, if you want to talk about building up confidence within your children, them seeing you continue to go after something after you fail and fail and fail. Because through that, like we talked about, through that process, that man is a better man. He's a stronger man. He's a more confident man. And that was only developed through those trials. So it's either you do that or you play it safe and we're not playing it safe. Yeah. It, it reminds me of this story when you're, you're talking about allowing your children to see you succeed, you fail, you, you go forth. When I was like, I don't know, maybe 17, 18, my, my dad had a really good buddy who had kids that were way fucking younger than yeah. me. So these are like 10, eight year old boys. And he's asking my dad one day and I'm sitting there and he's like, Hey, my kids don't even listen to me. Mm -hmm. He's like, but when this guy are around or you're around, all they want to do is like hang out with you or this, this other guy. And he was like, Jeff, it's because you're not leading. You're mm. not you. You're not the like in the alpha presence. You're not like being very masculine. And I never thought of any of that stuff before. Yeah. And but it, I was like, that fucking makes sense. Hunt, yeah. And he was just like ripped apart that his kids had like no respect for him, but would gravitate to these two other dudes in their lives. Yep. Well, that goes Man, back to like, what we talked about earlier of your kids are going to look up to someone. Mm -hmm. Someone is going to influence them. And that, unfortunately, that could be bad. Depends on the influence, but it could also be good if it's, you know, the right people. And but yeah, even to your point and to that story, it's like they're going to look up to someone. And they're going to want to emulate somebody. And sometimes it's they emulate you and it's the lazy version of you. And it's like you don't want that mm -hmm. for your kids. You don't want your kids not to be leaders. But again, like you said, peep, I wouldn't even say kids, but people gravitate towards confidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most They want leadership. Not everyone's meant to be an entrepreneur or a business owner, and that's fine. But the, all that shows me is like majority of people want to follow somebody. So it's like through the work you're doing, through the work that I'm doing, it's like, Let's build up as many men as we can to be those leaders that people want to follow in some way. And maybe that's just a leader in your family. Maybe it's just that. Mm -hmm. But if that can go to maybe in your church, in your community, starting a business, running for political office, whatever, it, whatever it is, like we are in a time now where we need men desperately to put their pride down, put their ego down except that failure is a part of this whole process 
and to not give two shits about what anybody says or thinks and just put your head down and just go, just go. You'll figure it out. Yeah. Put, get rid of their insecurities too. Cause yeah, that number of the men who, who I meet or work with, they are just super insecure. You know what I tell people who are insecure? You're insecure because you keep saying you're going to do something and then you don't do it. That's mm-hmm. why. It can be yeah. big or small. It doesn't matter. It, but that's exactly why you're you're insecure or you're not confident. Yeah, you're worried about what everyone thinks, what they're going to potentially say. So you're not doing it. Well, and you know you're going to let you're going to eventually you know you're going to let yourself down because you're like, well, I mean, I've been saying this for a couple of years now and I still haven't done it. So like, there's no, how, what you can't hang your confidence on anything. Cause you know, it's not there. You keep saying I'm going to lose weight this year, but it's like, you've said that for five straight years. So you have yes. zero confidence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And with, with the, the lose weight for me, it's like, if I don't lift, I get fucking skinny fat. Like yeah. I will lose, I will lose weight in my, my legs because most of my, my weight is in my, like my quads and, and my, my glutes because I don't do a lot of upper body for a shoulder injury, but mm. it's like, then I'm just disgusting looking because I'll probably yeah. keep eating the same amount. So oh, then yeah. I'll have this little pot belly and then, <laughs> yeah. and then yeah. my like legs will be sticks. My back will go away. And it's oh. like, Oh man, the opposite that is, of what you want. Exactly. So it goes both ways, what, yeah. depending on who you are. Like, 100%. you don't do good. You're, you're, you look disgusting naked either way. You get yeah. too fat, you get too skinny. It's like, oh, yeah. You don't want that. Don't want that. Heck no. Your girl doesn't want that either. No, she doesn't. And, <laughs> and anyone, when they say they do, it's because they're being complacent like you. When just she's like, oh, you, I love you however you are. It's like, well, it's because the man is breeding complacency in the household. Yeah. Yeah. There's no standard. Exactly. So when he's like, he's like, baby, you know how uh, the last couple of years I've gained that, that 30 pounds. I'm not, not like I was in high school when we met. You still <laughs> love me, right? You, you think I look good? And she's yeah. just like, yeah, I think I love how you are. I don't care. I love so you the way you are. And it's don't like. Lie. It's because he, as a head of household, is breeding this mindset of complacency. And, yeah. I, and I don't mean complacency like you're content uh, because you have a relationship with God. I mean complacency with just who you are as an like, individual, yeah. the way you're leading your life, etc. cetera. Um, I like to distinguish those two because I've told people like it wouldn't have, I have like such a strong faith in God. Like if some, for some reason, if I was put under a bridge with my kids, you know, like if the, the story of Job, yeah, something like that, it's like, I wouldn't let it bother me because I still have such a strong faith. Right. Yeah. That wouldn't bother me. Yep. So I like to make that distinction, the, the difference between those, those two, but yeah, yeah. The, the complacency culture, is is terrible it's that quiet desperation it's the you know dudes are just sad and miserable and they don't know how to reach out they don't have anyone to reach out or anyone to talk to yeah so that's the other concept of the brotherhood group is community it's being in a being with a group of people who you can be vulnerable with and one of the ways we do that the one of the ways we cultivate that is through everyone. Once you get into the group, you have an accountability partner because the thought behind that is I want you to learn how to lead and I want you to learn how to be led. You lead by mm-hmm. simply in this context, simply checking in with your guy. How are you doing? How's your day going? Any way I can pray for you, anything I can do for you, encouraging words, whatever you need. But also when you're getting those messages, you're in a position to be honest. Again, I can't force it, but I'm like, you have someone asking you how your day is going. Use that as an opportunity to open up. I'm not saying release all your deep, dark secrets and your biggest struggles, but just like let them know how your day's going. Man, I had a stressful day at work. Good. Let that out. Because most most men don't do that. 
because they don't have anybody to do that or they're not in a situation that is encouraging and allows them to do that and open up and be vulnerable. And I think the biggest way for men, one of the biggest ways for men to grow is through vulnerability because it allows them to be who they truly are. And if they're their true self, then that equals freedom. And then if you have more freedom, you have more confidence because you're like, I'm not trying to hide or wear a mask or pretend to be this person. I am who I am. And it is what it is. That confidence allows you to say, you know what? I don't really care what people think about me. So I am going to go for this job promotion. I am going to start this business. I am going to treat my wife differently. I am going to lead my kids differently because this is right. And I want to do it this way. Right now, everybody's operating out of what's people going to think about me? How are they going to say about me? And unfortunately, we have situations to where a group of men, they all treat their significant others one specific way. And it's because they all do it. Mm -hmm. They're short with them. They're, they're easily tempered with them. They don't open up. They're not vulnerable. And it's just like, I'm the man do this or they're the opposite. They're very passive and they don't do anything. And then the woman is the one leading. Yeah. So there's just, and let me also say this too. In no way am I ever, and I tell the guys this, I'm never coming from a place of like, I have everything figured out. I'm perfect. That's not true. I am still learning myself. I am still growing myself. I'm vulnerable with the guys because I'm like, if I can't be vulnerable, I can't ask you guys to be vulnerable. So I've opened up to them in ways that I'm just like, I don't hold back because I'm like, I know you need to hear this so you can see what vulnerability looks like. And selfishly, I'm like, it's good for me. I get to be more vulnerable and open up, which is going to make me less worried about what people think. Because that's it's one thing to say that oh, I don't care what people think, but it's like, well, are you actually practicing that? Are you putting things out there that shows you don't care what people think? But the, and then the more you do that, the more you realize, man, it's actually not that bad. It's OK. I'm going to survive. Yeah. Some people make fun of me or, yeah, some people judge me. But then you go to bed, wake up and it's a new day and you, you just keep going. It's not, it's not a big deal. So community for us is, is, um, is one of the major ways we cultivate change. Um, giving guys a space to open up, be free, be vulnerable, talk through their struggles and challenges. And um, I think a lot of the guys who I've talked to, they just, it's the one of the first times they've ever done that. And it's, and it's super good for them. Yeah, when we got on our call today, I mean, I could have I could have just said that I was crushing it this morning when I was I asked you how your morning was and you're like, yeah. I'm crushing it. And you asked me and I was like, fucking my morning ain't going that good, dude. I'm all over the place from this weekend. Yeah. And yep. This and that. But I'll it's just it's just part of it right now with what, what right. the circumstances were. But yep. I could have totally just lied to you and been like, Bro, I've been crushing it too. Yeah. But and that's like, what we and do. I don't know you. Yeah. And Everything I don't even know you. And I'm like, bro, my, my morning ain't going that good. Right. I'm yeah. No, and my that's, routine. What, that's what we do. We Everything's good. Everything's easy. I need to plug in my laptop real quick. But everything's good. Everything's easy. And, and we just we just kind of go that direction and say those things. But at the end of the day, it doesn't help if we're not able to just be real about where we're at. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like I said, having these guys do this is is just helpful and it's it's needed too. it really is needed. So I got a question for you. I want to I want to put push back a little bit on the word vulnerable vulnerability. OK, I think our definitions are the same because yeah. I try to never use the word vulnerability. Yeah, because when you look at the actual definition, it's vulnerability is like a weakness in the in the wall. Mm. That's where you're most likely yeah, going to be attacked. That's good too. An, an infant, because they cannot survive on their own, a, a, a infant is weak and they're vulnerable. Vulnerable, yeah, yeah. So yeah. like I try to use the word like humility and being humble. It's like I like that. You got to be because words, you know, have meaning. Sure. And like. And this is probably just a me thing. Like, even when it comes to the Bible, if someone wants to misinterpret a word, it's like, well, that word doesn't mean that. And mm -hmm. we have to know what this word actually means. Yeah. You know, um, 
Otherwise, then thing words just become subjective when mm-hmm. they should have meaning to them. But I'm, I'm pretty sure everything you say, I agree with just being humble enough to where you can express your feelings, your exact, et cetera. But I feel like the, the word vulnerable is really caught traction and people talk about vulnerability a yeah. ton on social media. And I'm like, this guy over here is like, we need to stop using that word. Yeah. You know, we need to use a different word. We all probably have the same meaning, but if you, we look at the definition of that word, our wife doesn't want us to come to her and truly be vulnerable where we're actually being showing true weakness and weakness. stuff because then she's going to feel a well, I agree with that. fight or flight. She's yep. not going to feel safe and secure. But yep. now we, we come to her with humility and is like, hey, I got this wrong. Here's how I can fix this. Or I got this wrong. I apologize. Or like, yeah, I didn't do like X, Y, Z. Like it gives her, and I've had people say like, oh no, that's showing weakness, um, admitting you're wrong. And I'm like, bro, I don't know where you're from, but yeah. no fucking women truly are in love with a man who's so prideful. He can't admit when he is wrong. That's yeah. so much worse than the respect that is earned by, by your wife. When you're like, Hey, I was wrong because mm-hmm. only super prideful or super insecure men cannot admit when they are wrong or their fault, especially to your spouse. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, so it's like, just be humble, man. Yes. In in the, in the, in the gym, in the fight game, there's a thing called like being humbled by the weights, the, the weights, the weights never lie. They don't get your ass kicked, getting your ass kicked in the, you know, in the gym. Like that's getting some humble pie served to you. Yeah. You know, just realizing it doesn't show it's not like oh no one calls it like you know you were vulnerable today against the the weights it's like no, the weights <laughs> yeah, won. Yeah. It, it humbled me it 100%. humbled me and made me realize like fuck i didn't have it today but guess what i'm gonna get it next time no i love that i will even um yeah i have no i'm even thinking about it humble enough to be like dude you're so right 100 percent right because i and i agree you are our definitions are the same, but using the wrong vernacular um, in the explanation or, or the word, because, mm-hmm. you know, the concept of vulnerable versus the concept of humble is two completely different things. And you're right. As men, we the being humble is what is how we grow. Yeah, yeah, how exactly. We, it's how people learn to res- honestly is how respect is earned through a spouse or through your kids or just even that, like telling your kids, Hey, I messed up. Mm-hmm. Like that is a humble thing to say. And that is hard. Right. But vulnerable when you think of that and the weakness and you, your kids, they, you can't be weak in front of your kids. You can't be weak in front of, I can't remember. There's a book I read. Um, a while, it was a couple of years ago. The, I can't remember it, the man something, but, um, but it talked about just this concept of like, if you show worry in front of your spouse and in front of your children, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to be worried. Mm-hmm. If you show you're scared or like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Even if you don't know what you're going to do, you can't show up that way because that is going to still instill fear into them. And then it's just, it's not a good scenario. It's not a good look, but if you can be humble enough to just be like, Hey, we're going to figure this out. Right. And show that strength. And that is it's so much different than what, uh, the concept of being vulnerable is. So I love that. I really do. Yeah. And if you have a group, a brotherhood, a group of men, that's where you can even be more, even more humble of the like, fuck dude, business is not going good, man. Like, I just don't know what I have to do. And you bounce some ideas because maybe there's a businessman or two in this group because you're yep. hoping to hang out with like-minded people. Right. You know? Yep. Um, and it's it. like, hey, this is what you got to do, brother. Because yeah. you can't – I tell people, like, you can't go to your wife with that thing, not because you don't want to or whatnot. It's just, it's just not healthy to put the stresses of fight or flight on her. 
yep. the safety and security on her. Um, and that's literally what uh, having a brotherhood is for. It's like, hey, yes, I don't know what to do in this situation. Maybe you're in your startup business. Maybe you're 20 years in your business. You know, it's like, hey, and they are they can be there for you. Be like, here's what you got to do. This mm-hmm. is what I would do. Fucking get on the horse, brother. Yeah. And it's like, all right, I, fucking, great. I got this. Yes. You know, it's and just being humble. And because you're a brotherhood, you're able to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, you're able to bounce those things off. Yep. Yeah. No, yeah. I agree. I think that's that's awesome. I love that. I'm going to definitely shift how I'm communicating that because I 100 percent agree with you. Yeah, because the, the thing about being humbled, like we'll just use a gym about, you know, not deadlifting 500 pounds and your son sees it's like, hey, I can continue to work at this and get this 500 pound deadlift. Yep. A vulnerable infant, they can't change anything to improve <laughs> yeah. their situation. Yep. You know, yep. if if your wall is vulnerable in a spot because it's missing something, it's like you that wall is is completely missing a piece like it's vulnerable the enemy can come through yeah like you can't change anything right there you're going to just put all your your soldiers yep. there and now you're just leaving another so it's like when we look at those definitions and the word vulnerability it's like really taking fire especially on social media at least in the work that we we see yeah, whether 100%. it's doing what we're doing or people trying to um Anything in, even in the kind of realm of yeah. of the social, what we do, it's like that. That word is taking fire. Hundred percent. Well, we'll shift it. We'll change it. Yeah, and it's one of the things that I want to do, and it's like, hey, I think we mean the exact same thing. Yeah. But just using verbiage different because when someone looks up the that definition, they're going to see, mm-hmm. oh, that's what that definition is. No, I agree. It's like, that's that's great. I'm glad you said something. That's awesome. Yeah, it's because it's like our wives truly don't want us to be vulnerable. Mm-hmm. They may say, and they may say that word, and they may even say that word because they see the definition. They may say, think that they still want us to. But the reality is they don't when it comes mm-hmm. down to it. They don't want us to do that. No. Yeah, I love that. That's awesome. Yeah. But they want us to respect them enough to where we can admit that we were wrong about something. Right. Yeah. And that's you know? huge. And that's a part of just growth and progress and um, mm. being, being the version of yourself. You want to, you want to be being the man you want to, you want to be. It's not easy, but again, this whole, everything we're talking about, it's, we're talking about personal development. That's not easy, mm-hmm. but you have to commit to it and being humble and say like, I had a good day or I didn't have a good day. I was able to admit when I was wrong or I wasn't able to admit when I was wrong or I didn't show up for my workout or I did show up like just, that whole process this everything we're talking about. It's, and that's what people just need to just lean into. It's hard. It's hard. Like just mm-hmm. point blank period. It is hard. Every day is a challenge, but it's just like, well, being broke is hard. Being overweight is hard. Being not confident is hard. Being inconsistent is hard. And I know that is also cliche too, but it's just like, which hard would you rather be going down? the path of the heart of personal development or the heart of just being complacent. And on, and on top of that, think of the compound effect of both of those scenarios that you gave being overweight, lack of confidence. Um, how yeah. does that compound over time and where does that go? And what, where does working on your personal development, hiring coaches in any and all aspect? Cause I mean, yeah. I think men should have coaches in all aspects of their life. Yep. Even if it's just a peer who is in your social group, who knows how to do this, you know, in the brotherhood. Yep. Well, how does that compound and what does that look like? We yeah. have the two choices. They can compound for the good or the bad or the third, the real ugly. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. That's awesome. Kind of talk about your, a man of faith. Yeah. you you consider yourself a follower of Jesus versus yeah picking one title of a religion. Sure. Yeah. And before we hit record, you were mentioning that, you know, men don't have uh, another group of men to rely on. And sometimes they're just sitting there in silence, looking for something to help them change. Yeah. 
can you expand on a kind of what it is that you do, what your, your purpose is in, in this little realm? Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And again, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm excited about this. Um, so to put it very plainly, I, I help men connect to their faith in a way that deep down, I believe they really want to, but they, they don't have the guidance. They don't have the history or there's just a lot of confusion in, in gray areas when it comes to their faith and religion, because those two concepts, while they are, you know, one focus comes to God when it comes to like God or higher being, um, what I've grown to learn over the years is that it's very different. There's actually a lot of differences when it comes to faith and religion. So, um, and I have a background in health and fitness. I've been a gym owner. I've been a personal trainer. I've trained athletes. I've worked with professional athletes. And uh, so I've taken that concept because I do believe health and fitness is a big indicator of our confidence as men. Um, and then tying it to the faith concept and helping helping men connect with God in a way that they've never had before. Um, and in turn, that has helped create what what I call the brotherhood group. Um, and I think it's so important because when it comes to faith and religion, there's religion is the way I put it is like it's a set of rules. It's do this, don't do this. Um, and if you're like me, if you did the things you weren't supposed to do, you just felt horrible. Right. Um, but when I look at the gospel and when I look at who Jesus was, he was a man of love. He was a man of patience, of kindness, of understanding. He loved everybody. Doesn't matter if it was a, um, a thief or a super religious person. Like he loved everyone. And I think if I can help people realize that, hey, you don't have to be a really, really good person in order for Jesus to love who you are. You just have to accept and acknowledge who he is and what he did for you on the cross and the fact that he rose from the dead three days later. And if you do that by, by the Bible, you are saved. And I think that is so much less of pressure to just accept a free gift than it is to feel like you have to do all of these things are live up to a certain standard that is frankly impossible. So, so helping, helping men realize that and giving them freedom to, and I, and we can go into more of that, but I, there's a lot of things that men struggle with alone that they feel embarrassed about that they're, they feel guilty for that really hold them back from tapping into who they want to be and where they want their relationship with God at. So what are your thoughts on the modern day church and where they have a place for men or do, do men who are truly trying to be, I guess, masculine men, is there a place for them in the modern day church or is the modern day church? Has it been more like feminized and in a, in a way? Yeah, I can't really. I can only obviously speak from my experience. Mm -hmm. um, and when it comes to, I think church is great. I think, yeah. I think church is a place of community. I think that I believe that is the body of Christ. Um, but I also believe that because we are sinners and inherently that's who we are. Church has some churches, some religions have been kind of transformed into, like I said earlier, this, living your life in such a way that if you don't live it, how the church preaches it or how the church portrays it, you just kind of feel like an outsider or an outcast. Um, and even like to go into my story a little bit. So I'm, I'm divorced. I have three kids. Um, and just that fact alone, being divorced was something that I was like, well, I can't talk about God cause I'm divorced. It says in the Bible that not to divorce your wife. Right. But again, that's me holding myself to a standard of perfection that I'll never match. You know, and, and the way that I look at it is if I could just accept that I'm not perfect and that is not the goal, the goal isn't to be perfect. The goal is to just strive to be like Christ. Then I can live my life in a way, acknowledging my past, acknowledging my shortcomings, acknowledging my failures um, and still like move confidently when it comes to my faith. So 
I didn't learn that in the church. I've learned that through just personal experiences and the church that I went to when I was going through my divorce, the first people to actually gossip, turn their back on me and judge me and walk away from me were actually people in my small group, the people that I was, mm-hmm. you know, doing life with. Mm-hmm. And so like that gave me a really big, it was a really big eye opening experience and one that unfortunately happened. Um, and I've made amends with some of the people from that group, um, but not everybody. And that's okay. But when it comes to church, it was just one of those things where it's like, you know, everyone puts on this persona that they're perfect and they're good and they don't have any struggles or anything like that. So when you do come out with your struggles or shortcomings, it's just like a lot of judgment. And again, that's just my experience. But what I think of just the modern day church, I, my response is, I guess it just depends on the church. I think it depends on the leadership. Um, I think when it comes to the feminization of it, I think it just depends on how how the leadership is constructed and what they preach and what they push forward. So I can't really put a blanket statement on it because I think every church is different. I think there are churches mm-hmm. that do a lot of great things. And then unfortunately, I think there are a lot of churches who are led by people who think they're better than what they actually are and they're afraid to acknowledge it. So that in turn just makes them kind of put off this vibe or this, this energy that just isn't welcoming or it's very like stressful. And I don't think church should be stressful. Yeah, I definitely don't think it should be stressful. It should be a place where you're able to go and relieve yourself of any word, anything worldly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. These, these problems that we have, these first world problems that we have. I remember I saw, um, an entrepreneur friend of mine, I think she just recently got divorced, but, um, yeah, she was talking about how she went to church and she was just was judged because she was a single mom bringing her kids and, and because of what she was, she said she was wearing like jean shorts or something to church. And like, she was just like, I had so many dirty looks at me. I had some people saying, saying things to me and Again, that just goes back to people in the church coming at you as if their life is 100% perfect. Mm -hmm. And so they're judging and and looking down on you. And it's that's the important. So a church like that, in my opinion, that's a lack of leadership, whether it's from the pastor or whoever's running small groups or any kind of Bible studies or anything like that. That is just a lack of leadership. So in that example, that would be something that I'm just like, yeah, the church has failed that single mom now and even that person who is who is casting down that condemnation and and judgment no yeah i i agree your your churches sound a lot different than the churches that are around where i live but not that mine are better they're just the complete opposite end of the spectrum oh okay where do you where are you (laughs) you i'm in nevada nevada that's right yeah the good yeah considered the most secular state in the mm-hmm. union. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's the opposite. It's a, kind of the opposite of that in a, in a way of their, it, G, like you said, Jesus spoke to everybody, mm-hmm. but these churches have gotten so far, they are promoting things. Yeah. You know, they're, they're promoting the um, LGBTQ. Yeah. They're, they're, they're promoting, things that you see on the news and politics. Oh, sure. They're, yeah. they're going out and saying, you know, if there's X population in this area of this race or creed, we need that many in here. So you need to bring that person. So we're more diverse. Oh. It's like, well, is that actually diversity? Because if I bring, let's just say I bring one of my black friends who grew up in the upper middle class neighborhood and his parents are college educated and he went to private school. I went to private school and he comes to church. That's not actually diversity because we grew up in the same neighborhood. His parents mm-hmm. grew up in the same neighborhood. Everyone's college educated. Upper yeah. middle class. There's no, it's to, it's just a color palette. Yeah. And that's what diversity is to them is just the color. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And versus I, yeah, for, for those who don't even know, um, it's, Sometimes I have to tell people, but so I'm, I'm mixed. I'm half black. My dad's black and my mom's white. And so, um, when it comes to 
just diversity and just that whole conversation. Yeah, I think a lot of things when it comes to church, even like people, they just want to be going in the right direction that everybody else is going and they're scared to stand their ground and just say what they believe and um, just make things, I don't know, just kind of make things what they are instead of, instead of going with the flow of what society or the world's doing. And so that kind of sounds like what you were describing, just a little bit of, you know, things that are just unnecessary to make church about, like bring yeah. ethnic friends so we can have a certain number of people here. It's just like, it's just, yeah. so, yeah. it's, I was like, man, this is getting, this is getting weird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I bet. Because it's like, if we want a true diversity, it's like go out into the area where it's the most impoverished sure. white kids and bring one of them because this church is also in a very upper middle class neighborhood. And it's like, mm. how do we go out to those neighborhoods and bring in the super poor white kid, the super poor black kid, not just the kid who's in our neighborhood mm -hmm. who happens to check off the color belt? Or how do right. we get the really old, the really yeah. old people who've experienced different things? Like that's yeah. actually like diversity, the different socioeconomics uh ages etc experiences versus just go out into your neighborhood and make sure we're checking off these color color yeah boxes right no that's wild but what are you gonna do yeah it's it is interesting how they've gone kind of the you know they want everyone to come and no one's no one no one can do any wrong right yeah but make sure you donate at the end yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, church is a business at the end of the day. It is. <clears throat> yeah. And they, they are, and it makes me not want to go to them. We stopped going to one of the bigger churches here, the one of the ones I'm talking about, because they have a yearly budget of $21 million. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if anyone knows business salaries can be anywhere from 40, about 40% of that. Right. And it's like, so what is that like $9 million going to? Like how many, how many fucking people are you employing? Yeah. What's your guys' salaries? Yeah. 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 I think, and that's a, so I was a part of a church plant, um, back in 2015, 16, I think. Um, and that was the first time I just cause I was in meetings now and I was, you know, on, cause I wanted to be a pastor at some point I thought. Mm -hmm. Um, but like I was in meeting and that was the first time I realized like, oh man, church is really a, uh, church is really a business. Like I didn't realize, obviously not thinking about like, oh yeah, these people have to make a living somehow. Um, but that was the first time I realized church was a business and there was a process and, um, they had procedures and, and schedules and budgets and all those things. Just, you know, when you're younger and you don't grow up in the church on that side of it, you just don't really ever ever know. And not saying that that's a bad thing. I mean, I think it just depends. Like I said, it just depends on what the church is doing in the community and how they're serving people and loving people. And um, just like I want to be successful, I would never say anything about a pastor or, or someone who's a leader of a church not being successful just because they're a part of a church. But um, yeah, I do think it is going to get looked at differently, though, because it is a church and churches are there to serve. Right. So mm -hmm. I think it can, depending on the person and your viewpoint, I think people can look at it a little bit differently and that's understandable too. Yeah. Steph, dude, this was cool. This was I loved fun. It. Dude, this yeah. was great.